everyone, and welcome to another installment of ACC's Ask Me Anything series, where we ask leaders in the in-house community and beyond your questions. My name is Ramsey Salibi. I'm Associate General Counsel here at ACC, and I'm pleased to introduce Kobe A. Connor, who is the Director of Business and Legal Affairs at a company that really needs no introduction, Netflix. <laughs> Kobe, thank you so much for joining us today for this brief chat. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Wonderful. So I figure we can start with something fun, uh, maybe help uh, to, to, to get us to know you a little better. And uh, so I thought we can ask some rapid fire questions. And I think you can anticipate what my first question is going to be. <laughs> I have to ask, uh, what is your favorite Netflix show? I would probably say Altered Carbon. Ooh. But, uh, but uh, the, this season, this new season of uh, Umbrella Academy was pretty strong, too. <laughs> That's good. I like both those choices. What was your least favorite course in law school? I guess I'd probably have to say torts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, first place you'll travel to when it's safe again? Uh, it's, it's a toss-up uh, uh, between um, Mykonos and maybe going to Samoa, two places I've not been before. Oh, wow. That sounds fun. Uh, favorite novel? Probably anything written by Octavia Butler. I love her science fiction. Nice. Uh, what is your biggest pet peeve at work? <sighs> biggest pet, pet peeve? Uh, when someone is unprepared. Unprepared. That's, good That's my biggest pet peeve. Um, lastly, and maybe most importantly, what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? That's probably the easiest question you've given me. Um, it would be <laughs> cookie dough. <laughs> I think I think a lot of the viewers today will agree with you on that one. Um, awesome, thank you. That, that was really fun. Um, but but let's let's jump into some more substantive questions, which is why I think everyone is here today. Uh, so first and foremost, we have seen I think an explosive de demand during COVID uh, for Netflix, and I'm really curious. So how has Netflix adjusted to that, and how has the legal department supported that? You know, I think we were in a great position as a company. You know, first and foremost, Netflix is, is kind of a tech company before it's an entertainment company. So we were um, uh, pretty prepared to do kind of virtual meetings and, and do, we use a lot of uh, uh, virtual conferences, you know, even prior to the, uh, to the pandemic. So we were able to switch gears when we had to work from home. I won't call it seamlessly, but it was, uh, it, it was uh, almost second nature for us. So that helped. Um, but the biggest difference is I, I didn't anticipate, and I don't think, I don't think most people anticipated really the, uh, the increased demand for the service and, and really kind of the demands that that placed on not only the company itself, but the, but the legal group as well. So we've been trying to take measures to make sure people don't burn out because now there's really not that distinction between work and home. You know, we, when, we, when we talked about work-life balance in the past, that's, it's really about like the work-life blend that we're living in right now. Um, so it's really trying to manage uh, your time so you don't burn out because I, I, a lot of my colleagues, you know, will get up and just work through the day and even into the evening because there's no really natural breaks. Um, and we don't want that to impact adversely both the work product, your personal, uh, you know, well-being and your family. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that, that I think we're seeing that. We'll see, we're seeing that all around. I, I suppose on a, on a related note, how, how has the culture uh, specifically within the legal department shifted? You know what? Um, you know, Netflix has a pretty defined culture generally across the company. You know, you can, you know people can always look at our, our culture memo. But I think, you know, we really look to that to lean into using a lot of judgment. We had to do a lot of judgment in this time where people are kind of spread out in all these different places. So we lean on, lean in on our judgment, freedom and responsibility, um, really being able to make sure you're, you know what the, the big issues are so you can kind of work really independently, but also understand what the goal is for the larger group. Yeah, yeah that, that makes, uh, uh, I think that really resonates. Um, you know, it seems, Kobe, every time I'm, I, I uh, turn, you know, turn on the news, there's always someone entering that, the, the content, online content streaming space. And I'm really curious, you know, just looking to the horizon, what is your strategy? What is Netflix's strategy on dealing with that? How are you differentiating yourself from these other competitors? And, and of course, as importantly, how's the legal department, what role does the legal department play there? 
I think at, it's a really exciting time um, for entertainment because we're you know you're you're able as cons as we all as consumers are able to get a lot of different type of really great content from a lot of different platforms, and I, so I think it's a good thing that other people are you know particularly the more traditional studios are entering into the fray. You know, Netflix as a, as a company itself kind of really changed the dynamic, and and now other companies are kind of doing similar things. But as, as far as competition is concerned, like I think, you know, the, the best thing that Netflix does and we can continue to do is to really focus on what, we, what we're doing and make sure what we're doing, we're doing it to the best of our abilities and we're putting out the best content we possibly can and we're working hard every day to make sure our subscribers are satisfied and, uh, and continue to fulfill their needs. Now, with how the business team, you know, business and legal affairs team works into that is really helping our creatives um, make those deals, you know, cut the best deals, kind of being creative about how to do these deals, working collaboratively with our creative executives, and even with uh, the people who sit across the table from us, uh, who represent the talent, to, to make sure we get the best content possible to, be, to put the best product out there as possible. Great, yeah, I, I, um, just based on your title, I mean, business and, and legal affairs, I, I do have to ask, and I, and I know we might be going a little off, off script here, but I mean, do you have any strategies? What's your number one tip of sort of uh, being a trusted legal uh, advisor to the business team? I, I think, you know, the, my biggest um, little bit piece of advice, it may seem pretty simple, but I think it's important, particularly for us attorneys, is to be curious. Be curious about like, and in this, this applies to whether you're in-house or not. Be curious about your client and know who your client is. We represent Netflix and, and, and more specifically, our creative executives who are trying to make the best, you know, independent film structured movies as possible. Um, so we want to know what they want, what their motivations are, what their goal is. So we ask a lot of questions because we can't do our jobs well if we don't understand what they want. So we want to be really curious, really interested in the business, and not just the legal part of the business, but the business itself, um, and, and what the goals, the overall goals, the corporate goals, the, the, st the strategic bets. All of these things are important to know for us so we can do our jobs uh, as best as possible. I think that's great advice. Be curious, yeah. Can't put it more uh, uh, directly and, and succinctly than that. So, uh, so, so that's great, um, Kobe. I'll, I'll just uh, as sort of a, a final question. I know you've sort of been a, a lead leader within ACC. I'll just ask you very briefly if you could share some some of your experiences as a leader within ACC, um, and, and you know if you recommend uh, the the, the, uh, the in-house community watching today to, to get involved. I'll, I'll tell you this, um, I. I was strongly encouraged by one of my mentors to join ACC years ago, Renee Benjamin. I believe she's, she's still on the global board. And, uh, and, but for her, you know, and you know, Renee, she's, she doesn't really take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I'm really glad that she strongly encouraged me, encouraged me to participate. And I started off just working on a, a committee and I, I really got enthusiastic about the organization and really once I got an opportunity to kind of contribute in, in, in a meaningful way. And I've never regretted my decision of being a, a part of ACC Southern California or the leadership. This is actually, as we're talking, I'm soon to term off as the immediate past president. I'm gonna be the president emeritus and then they're gonna put me off the pasture. <laughs> but um, this has been, I, I think, and if people are curious about ACC or, or about getting involved with ACC, I felt the opportunities and experiences I've, I've got uh, that I received participating on the board with all these wonderful like general counsels and, 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 and senior level attorneys at all of these wonderful companies in Southern California helped me as an attorney and helped me achieve and be a better executive for my company as well. So I learned a lot uh, from, from my, uh, my, my co-board members and my fellow board members throughout the years as well. Wonderful. Thank you, Kobe. Yeah, we're certainly very appreciative of your support and, and guidance of, uh, over the years. And I'm particularly thankful for you joining us today. I, I hope the uh, viewers will, will pick up on a few uh, of the really um, interesting tips that, that you provided. Uh, thanks again, Kobe.